Um, at the scale that I'm talking about, I can't point to any working model that has been a success. I mean, you can, we can achieve certain things on a smaller scale, but if the aim of the game is to build from scratch both a sense and a reality of nationhood, then the scale of the partnership has got to be very significant. And probably in New Zealand, the state is the only um, the only possible uh, partnership option. And there, of course, there is enormous risk in that since the state was the perpetrator of the problem in the first place. Um, so we're kind of walking into a time of experimentation and challenge around how tribes protect their sense of themselves and allow that to grow while holding hands with the abuser. And everyone who's been engaged in an abusive relationship will tell you that's very, very hard. Not impossible, but hard. So uh, there are other ally uh, stories, particularly in the private sector, but, uh, and of course the tribes allying amongst themselves is quite, um, quite a positive story of the last decade or so, um, as they've kind of ganged up in the commercial arena to make a bit more money, in fisheries, in primary production and that sort of thing. They've been economically successful by cooperating amongst themselves, some might say conspiring amongst themselves. But the scale I'm talking about is an order of magnitude larger than that. It's one thing to take your um, capital sum and have it earn you your 10 or 20% you want a year. It's another thing to make this fund a hundred times larger in order for you to be the transformative force in the lives of your people that you must be if your people are to survive with intact their own sense of identity. Their language still being spoken, their customs still being practiced, their lives still led in an in interconnected and cohesive fashion amongst themselves. Incredibly difficult for an integrated community like the Māori community, just as it is for Native Hawaiians in, in Hawaii.